Hi, I'm Lisa Slade with the Chronicles of Horse. I'm here today with Australian horseman Guy McLean. How are you doing today, Guy? I'm real good. How are you doing? Super, thanks. Good. He, he's going to be uh, doing a Q&A session with us here, and then he's going to show us how he does some of those amazing things with his horses. Um, we had some readers submit some questions, and we're going to get to them now. Um, so tell me how you got involved with horses. I've been on and around them since I was 16 months old. I'm the youngest of five boys and we have a beautiful sister under us and my mum and dad wanted to move out of the city when, when the oldest boy was nine and they wanted to take us to live in the country. So they bought 1,600 acres, bought 50 horses and said we're going to be, to be a bush family, which is, you know, in Australia, that's, if you're a bushman, you, you're a man on the land. Yep. And so I've been on and around them since 16 months, riding them by myself since four, uh, sorry, working with them since I was 15 professionally and performing since I was 21. Horses have been my life since before I could ever remember. I said to my dad when I was about five or six, I said, Daddy, everyone's asking me what I want to be when I grow up and I want to be a world-class horseman. He said, why, son? Why don't you like money? Because it's a tough life, you know, unless you're at the top of your game. And I've worked my whole life to be at the top of my game. My dad's very proud. And you have a very special horse that you started with called Nugget, right? Yes, Tell I do. Tell me a little bit about Nugget. Uh, I was taking rides for my dad's resort and I've been taking them for about six years. And I said, Dad, I'm working all these wonderful old guest horses and then I'm putting guests on them and they, they're going backwards. And I said, it's breaking my heart. I said, I'd, I want to be a horseman. I, I want to be able to train young horses and educate them and sell them on. So I'll do your rides through the day, but I want to work young ones at night. So he said, well, let's go. I'll give you $650 to buy as many as you can. And my plan was to train them and sell them on. Well, I bought Nugget for $200 and I bought uh, three others for $100 each and uh, I couldn't sell any of them. I fell in love with them. I think I sold two and then Nugget just become everything to me. Um, within, by the time he was a four year old, I was riding him everywhere, bridleless and saddleless. And that was mainly for me. I said to myself, if you really want to do this, you shouldn't need gear on you to get it done. And then I started performing my bush poetry and taking Nugget with me. I was a very shy boy, even though I'm getting over that now. I was a very shy boy and Nugget gave me a strength that no one else gave me. Before my name meant anything to any humans, it meant something to Nugget. It, and he said to me that I believe you're as good as any, as any king or prince or any top rider in the world. And that belief that he gave me is, is now when I ride his babies and I ride horses all over the world, that horse... He's not the most athletic I've ever ridden, but his heart and his try for me and his belief in me is, is the reason I'm the horseman I am today. That's very cool. Yeah. yeah. So talk about how you decided that riding horses at Liberty without a bridle and a saddle was the best way to sort of showcase their talents. Well, you see them in the paddock do everything and they do it at a thought's notice. And it's like saying, look at what a great dog handler I am and you take the leash off and they run away. <laughs> you know, when they're at liberty, which means they have nothing on them, they are at liberty to do whatever they like. And so it's, I, I don't think it's an ego thing, but it, as a young boy, I felt fairly significant within my family. And not that they tried to make me feel that way, but I was the youngest of five boys. They're all very good at things. But when I was around horses, I was as fast as them, I was as strong as them, and I was as brave as them. And I thought to myself, if they really want to do it, I should be able to do it with nothing on them. Um, I was getting compared to names that I know now, and at the time I'd never heard of them before because I was in a bubble in our, our place at the homestead. And my dad always said, I don't care what you do with horses as long as you don't hurt them and you don't hurt yourself and you have a good time. And my whole life's been around that. So I started taking the bridle and saddle off. And as soon as you do that, you realise you have to be better. You can't make things happen anymore. I mean, I could handcuff you to here and have a conversation with you all day, but would you want to be here? If I can hold you with my voice and hold you with my, with my words, I mean, that's what I do with my horses. I say that there's plenty of places you could be, but right beside me will be the best and I'll look after you. I think a horse is always looking for a leader, leader worth following, and that's all I've ever tried to be is a leader worth following. Very yeah. cool. So talk about the horses that you use for your team. Um, one of our readers wanted to know if they get along well when they're at Liberty in their paddocks as well. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> they are family. And everyone says, well, that's why they can do what they do, they're family. But yeah. I'm the youngest of five boys with a sister. And if mum and dad weren't around, we didn't always get on. We love each other and, and there's a respect with that. But there's a definite pecking order that they play with all the time. Little Pride, my pretty girl yep. that's in my show. She's had a year off. She hasn't done a performance for over a year. And it's funny, in the paddock, they just push her around and bully her. And because I'm the leader in our show, she says dad's around. She tries to bite him and pick on him in the show. And then she gets in trouble back in the paddock. <laughs> Pride's beautiful, but she's not, 
terribly clever. She, she yeah. got herself in trouble with that. But um, so no, they they play with their own pecking order. I'll go home and put them in the paddock. They've got no bites on them. They look wonderful. I give them a month off and they come back and pride's all bit up because she's been picking fights. So yeah, so it's when I go out there, I say it's very much like having four wonderful football players. They may not get on you know at the bar but when they're with their coach it's yes sir and, and away they go and they fight for each other as a team yeah mm. very cool